I want to first add a more rocky environment for which we already have the assets and also a second type of vegetation with different kind of bushes and a different type of grass. So let's make the assets for that. For the tall grass, I am using some curves that I am shaping to match this reference. And then I will just apply the same shaders as for the grass. Then I am adding a second type of bushes using the branch instancer we made for the trees, so I can just instance curve on top of each other, and I am using the same leaves as for the tree. I also made a flower with a really simple shader to sprinkle on top of the bush. Using this setup, I made a few variations of this one. And then I played around with the settings, removing the flowers and changing the branch distribution to get a third type of bush. So now I have six objects in this collection. And here is the usual look dev preview. With those new elements, let's add some biomes. Unlike the biome bridge where we based everything on the chunk and a random value, here I want to base everything on a noise value so we have smoother transitions and not straight transitions at the limit of the chunks. So for that, we need to store the simulated position of each point, which will be used to drive the noise values. This value is located right here, in the Compute Terrain Height block. So this is kind of the fake position. And let's store this as named attribute, right outside the simulation zone. Now let's quickly try this out with a noise texture. For the vector, we can plug in a named attribute, which is the one we just created. And here with a pretty low scale, let's just put this through a greater than node. And here we can see the limit of the biomes moving along with the rest. So now that we have this value, we can already use this greater than value to switch between the different values for the biome. So right after the biome attribute for the bridges, you can add another node. I just need to make a bit of room for that. And this attribute will only set it where the biome is not already one. Like this. And now for this first biome, which is going to be a rock biome, we can use the greater than value into a switch node set to integer to switch between a value of zero for a normal biome and two for, let's say, a rock biome. Now, before getting more fancy with this, let's try this out. So for the rock, the first thing I want to do is to change the material of the soil to the rock material. So right after our instance or soil, add a separate geometry node with the selection being a named attribute, which is going to be the biome. And we want to test if its value is equal to our new biome, which is the index 2. Let's join the two selections together and set the separate geometry node to instance. Add the set material node onto the selected geometry flow. And here we want to set it to rock, just like this. Now for the rock biome, we want to remove the grass and instead instance rocks. So before the grass instancer, we can apply a separate geometry set to point. And here we can also duplicate the named attribute biome and the test equal to. Now the inverted will be our grass from before. And for the selection, we can add the rocks. Let's join this and change some instancing parameters. For the scale, we obviously can go way lower. The rotation can just be a fully random value, just like for the rocks, from minus pi to pi on each axis. And we may want a bit less rocks for this. So add a delete geometry node. And for the section, we can add a random value on which we can tweak the probability. So the higher it is, the more points we will remove. Around 0.7 and 0.8 works fine for me. Now this biome transition is already looking pretty nice, but I want the transition to be a bit longer. So for this, we need to change a bit the noise value so the transition points are scattered over a bigger distance. We can do this pretty easily by tweaking the fake position distance right before the noise texture with the mix color node. 
set to linear light right here. We can add a second noise texture with the vector being the same thick position and the color output can go into the second input of this node. Now let's have a look at this. So for the scale, we can go way higher, about 100. We can set the detail and roughness to zero. And as you can see with this linear light color mix, we can make a smoother transition between the biome regarding the different biome values. And let's see how it looks. As you can see, the transition is a bit smoother. Now to continue with this, let's make another biome with the shrubs we designed before. So here let's generalize this chunk selection. Instead of switching between the new value and zero, we can switch between the old value like this and the new value which will be two. So we can select all those nodes, group them with Ctrl G, set the new biome value as an input, set the test with not equal to one as an input also, which is going to be not affect. And here we have the new biome. And for the parameters we want to tweak, we could play with the W value of a 4D noise, the scale, and the greater than value. And this will be a probability. This will be the simple biome blend. Let's duplicate this to assign a new biome of 3. We still don't want to tweak the bridge, which has a value of 1. And let's see how it affects everything. So right here, after the previous separate geometry node, let's add another one to test with the biome value of 3 and separate this flow. Duplicate this one and let's plug it like this. For the selection, I want to change the collection to my shrubs and let's change a bit of the scale. And right here, we have our first shrubs. Now, just like the rocks we stand on top, I also want to remove a little bit of points. So let's also add a daily geometry node right here with the probability which is going to be a bit high. Here, for example, we have a shrubs biome alongside our tree. Now let's clean this up and make a test render with those two new biomes. And that's it for this part. Hope you learned something here. In the next one, we'll tackle the very important step of making this animation seamlessly loop. Feel free to reach out to me if you have any question. Thank you for watching and see you next time.